Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat, episode 266, featuring a review of the game Legend of Grimrock 2 by Almost Human. Now this game has been out a little over a month now. I've uh, sunk something like 40 hours into it. I think it's great and I think you'll enjoy it too. Anyway, we've got a lot to cover, so without further ado, here is Legend of Grimrock 2. And here we go folks with the awesomeness that is Legend of Grimrock 2. Really, really fun game. Had a blast with this thing. Uh, I've got about 40 hours into it. Just shy of uh, 40 hours. And it's only been out a little over a month. So that gives you some idea of the, the fun level. Now, as, as we'll see, it's kind of an homage uh, to some older games. I, I'll assume that you've played the first game, or at least seen my, my video of that. A lot of the same stuff is true of this game. Uh, you can ratchet up the difficulty. You can turn off auto-mapping. Use your own graph paper. You can <laughs> basically make your life more difficult. I don't really understand why people want to do that, but the, the options are there. If you feel like you've got something to prove. And if, you know, character creation options, uh, not too bad. Uh, you can, though, uh, screw up pretty badly, I guess. But it's uh, if you follow the, if you read the text and make some choices, <laughs> uh, you should do all right. As you can see here, lots of different portraits to choose from. Uh, men, and, uh, male and female portraits. The it doesn't really make any difference on the the gameplay whether you play as a, as a male or female though. And then we've got all these different races to choose from: insectoids, lizard men. They all have their ups and downs, right? Uh, the minotaurs really strong, a little slow, and they eat 25% more food. At least on normal difficulty, that's not going to be an issue though. Ah, oh, yes, and then we have the Ratlings! Oh, man, <laughs> it's an awesome class. Based on, as you can probably guess, <laughs> rats! Hello! And they didn't put any rats in the first game, so I think they made up for it. More than made up for it in this one. you got rats all over the place. You could even be a rat! How cool is that? The rats also have some pretty cool uh, abilities, too, we'll get into. All right, and here's the classes. As you can see, a lot of these are just normal... D&D style classes. A couple weird ones, the Alchemist. For some reason these guys are they have a firearm perk. And what's really cool about them too is herbs that you collect. They'll actually reproduce in your inventory. So you're kind of a walking garden. Hey man, where'd you get that shroom? Yeah, it was growing in my butt crack. Yeah, it's probably best not to think too hard about how that happens. Uh, we also have farmers. These are just uh, really far out. Um, instead of getting experience points by killing things, they get experience points by eating. I yeah, haven't quite figured that one out either, guys, but uh, it sounds pretty pretty cool. Definitely something I haven't seen before. Uh, and then knights and rogues and wizards. You know, all the usual stuff. I think I'll just go with a knight for this guy. I'm just going to put together a quick little party here. Take you up to the first big battle. Then we'll switch over to my other party, and I'll show you some of the, the later game. So there's a couple, you know, there's one philosophy of game playing these games is just to randomize everything, and then just go with whatever you randomly get. Uh, as I said, though, the game is not all that easy, so you probably uh, you know don't want to handicap yourself too bad here. You know, try to make some reasonable decisions. You know, if knight probably needs a lot of strength, uh, vitalities. That's where your hit points comes from. And you notice that everything is, it's a nice system here. Everything's related. So these uh, four attributes all have a uh, corresponding resistance that they can build up. And just like with the other Grimrock game, uh, the resistances are will make or break you. There's a lot of creatures in the game that have poison, for example, or try to burn you or freeze you or whatever. And uh, those resistances really pay off. They're really... Uh, <laughs> You know, you don't want zero resistance if you if you can help it in, in anything. And then we got a nice uh, set of traits to choose from. And some of these traits are bound to certain races. Like the skilled here, we get one extra skill point. Uh, but I don't I don't get this one. Why that's 
I mean, just one skill point? <laughs> uh, I guess that's to give you a bit of a nice starting advantage, but I'd rather have something that's going to, uh, you know, permanently benefit me. Various kinds of resistances. Uh, we got lots of stuff to choose from. Let's see, natural armor. That's pretty cool. So you just get straight up five uh, protection. You know, some of these will scale better than others. Like, a lot of this stuff would be very useful at the beginning part of the game when you don't have any armor <laughs> or weapons, but, you know, that's going to change. So, um, you know, I guess you need to think about wh whether you want the advantage now or maybe something that's not so awesome to start off with but will, you know, have a constant benefit to you. Uh, lots of skills. And you notice there's little diamonds on some of these. I guess everyone has a diamond. Basically when you reach that diamond you tend to get an extra perk with that. Like the light weapons I think when you get to the first diamond there you get backstab and then on up to I think you can backstab with any kind of weapons. Or what does that say? Yeah it's about dual wielding. Uh, for this guy I'm kind of imagining a sword and a shield uh, for the knight right? <laughs> That's original! Uh, that's pretty cool, though. The light weapons, you have two different kinds of those. You have ones that get their damage bonus from strength, like a longsword. And then you have daggers and knives and things that get their benefit from dexterity. So that's pretty cool. You can play as a roguelike character. Just pump up your dex, not worry about strength, and vice versa. Uh, the heavy weapons will be the, you know, huge axes, the two-handed swords, and all that kind of thing. I think, uh, I'm wanting to say pole arms fit under that category. Perhaps could be wrong about that, but there are weapons that you can attack from the back row. Uh, armor is going to be big, big deal for pretty much everybody. Uh, there are spells you can use for armor, but it really, it's really nice. You know, with this game, oh, you're always getting attacked from the back or from the side. You don't want any characters to be uh, <laughs> run around, running around without any kind of armor. Oh, look at these rats! I can't believe this is... Uh, look at that. Look at all those choices. You know, I was tempted to make a party of nothing but ratlings. I mean, that would probably be awesome overload, but uh, you could do that. They were telling me that... Um, Yuho was talking about a guy that had a party of all ratling farmers. I'm you know, not sure how that would work out. I think the ratlings are probably best for rogues, since they have that dexterity bonus and they're not all that strong. But, uh, you know, as, you, as you'll see, they got a cool perk that gives them a random stat every level. Which is just, I mean, that's an amazing uh, stat. I guess that's why they don't have a huge pool of stats, though, to begin with. So, you know, there's trade-offs. Lots of options here. <laughs> I think I'll just stick with the old uh, rogue. Rat rogue. Uh, let's see, yeah. So they take a hit to their strength. So you probably wouldn't want to play these guys as a knight or a fighter. We can, uh, I guess you could do the fighter and just stick with the dagger-like weapons. You know, some that would use dexterity. Uh, willpower. You know, again, all the characters need all of these stats. Uh, the willpower for the fighting classes, a lot of the weapons you'll pick up have special abilities on them. You know, maybe a special attack, a thrust or something, or maybe they'll shoot out something. And that uses up your willpower, your energy points. And uh, I think it could get quite significant, so, you know, just because you're wanting to play as this big dumb tank doesn't mean you don't have uh, any need for energy or willpower. You know, I'm almost tempted to grab that poison resistance. I'm, you know, I'm thankful to say the, the poisoning isn't quite as bad this time around as it was in the last game. You know, there, there are games like this where the poison resistance just trumps everything else, right? <laughs> Thinking of Might and Magic 6. Oh my god. I think I can still trace that path back to town in my head. <laughs> Those damn spider tunnels in that game. Alright, so I'm just going to skip ahead of here so you can see the intro movie. And then we'll see what the game looks like. Ah, 
Yeah, there's rain on the camera. It's kind of weird. <laughs> I love that barrel. <laughs> That's cool. Nice little detail. Uh-oh, looks like the compass has directile dysfunction. Turn the ship towards the rocks! Damn this GPS! I knew I should have gone with Google, not Apple Maps! Oh, God! I know what you're thinking. Okay, so the ship has sank, all the crew is dead. How did those guys trapped in a cage in the birth of the ship survive? Oh, here we go. All will be explained. See? The ship just broke up just right, providing a makeshift raft for the iron cage to float upon as it makes its way somehow to the island. Here we go. We've activated the outboard motor. You probably didn't see that on the cage, but uh, it's there. And we are making pretty good speed. Man, this is a... <laughs> Cage is better than the ship. Legend of Grimrock Yeah. It's Grimrock, baby. It don't have to make sense. <laughs> That's not what this game's about. And here we go. As you can see, conveniently... There is a stick <laughs> just within reach of my cage. Go ahead and get these guys ready. You can cast spells. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> okay, probably not the brightest thing to go casting a fireball inside a cage. <laughs> Everybody's so pissed off at the bug right now. So I'm trying to learn some spells. You can just. Click on the runes and maybe you'll get lucky. You can trace patterns. Hopefully I'll... There we go. Now Radzella here can fart in the general direction of the enemies. <laughs> Leaves a little damage over time cloud. Makes her really popular at parties, let me tell you. Okay, I think I've run out of uh, spell points. So we'll go muck around a little bit. Chop up some grass. Yes, we can mow the lawn. Ah, rock on. So, basically what I'm doing here is just exp exploring. You know, this game is all about exploration. You're looking for the little things, little stuff lying around. <laughs> okay, I didn't mean to eat that, but I guess it's okay. Oh, Fabio, man, he's just is a very hungry guy. They got these little crablings, but can't target them. I guess they're just there for decoration. Oh, it's such a tease. Ah, oh, some torn britches. Hmm, torn britches. You know those things would probably be 300 bucks at Hot Topic. They're mine. Free. Just lying on the ground. You know, I really can't emphasize this enough. Do not try to rush through the game. I mean, you want to turn and look every direction. Being on the lookout for little buttons and signs and it's almost as uh it's almost as intense as a game like Mr. Riven. You know, you can get stuck somewhere because you didn't notice a little button. It's not always a question of getting stuck, it could just be you might miss out on a cool secret area. You really have to just get downright gynecological about the, the secret passages in this game. Alright, I got a bone club. Now that is a, a heavy weapon. This guy, <laughs> he's uh, trained for light weapons. Not a huge thing. Hopefully I'll find a, a light weapon for him soon. But you don't know, you know, what are you going to find? How do you know? It'd it kind of stink if you buffed up, put all your points into a certain type of weapon and then never <laughs> found said weapon. Uh, you will eventually. There's a pretty good mix of weapon types. Good weapons for every category, so might just take a while. Got some ether weed. Mm, ether weed. Okay, here we go. First battle. Well, that is a serious looking tortoise. <laughs> the shell on that son of a. God. I'm trying to do my little Grimrock shuffle. 
A little patented maneuver. Go ahead and fart on the turtle. You gotta be careful that you don't walk into your own fart cloud. That's always embarrassing. Ah, okay. Killed and served. It doesn't get any more organic and free range than that. Ah, look, there's another one. Come on to pop. Oh, hey, don't wait. Hey, where are you going? Ah. <laughs> that would have been a good backstab opportunity. Yeah, throw a rock. Keep lining up the spells, getting those ready. It's, uh... Yeah, so you gotta wait for the cloud to dissipate. If you go rushing into that, <laughs> you'll actually hurt yourself. You'll take damage. Okay, get the rock back. Get some more turtle meat. Mm, that's your turtle power right there. <laughs> Cowabunga. <laughs> yeah. Ah, anything over here? There, there could even be stuff hidden underwater. You really have to be careful, observant, alert. Oh, there's another turtle. Yeah, definitely worth killing everything you come across. Nothing else. This will be food. These guys aren't doing too much damage. Oh, see, got some sandals. Look at that. <laughs> you ever lose your sandals at the beach? <laughs> I think I just found them. Oh, this, oh, so look at that. He's kind of got a charge. That's, that's pretty neat. So yeah, the different, the different critters will have different weaknesses, strategies, and some of that is <laughs> it's going to get really intense later on. <laughs> Actually, not even, not even that far into the future here, you're going to see how difficult the game can get. All right, so there's a lock. I gotta find a key here somewhere. See, that's what I'm talking about. Where was the? I must have missed a. Yep. So there's the passage. I don't know how people get how people get by without the the auto map. I mean, <laughs> maybe it would actually be better without the auto map because that way you could probably encourage you to explore more thoroughly. But uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like my modern conveniences. I don't want to build a fire in the microwave. I actually, uh, you know, I, I didn't realize how badly I had missed this Grimrock game, but... You know, I played the Might and Magic, what was it, 10? The Might and Magic remake, or update, whatever you want to call that thing. And it was a good game, but it's just not as, uh, didn't have this kind of polish. These Grimrock guys are known for. And it's just unbelievable. I know how small, how like just a small little team. Like I think they had maybe seven people. Five or seven people, something like that. And put all this together. And it just did a really good job on it. You know, never had any bugs or crashes or anything. Ah, looks like we've got our first pressure plate puzzle. Let's just put it this way. <laughs> if you get stuck here, do not procreate. I am through. And I've got some a letter from the island master. Why is it that everybody who calls themselves a master is a bad guy? I mean, can't, can't there be good master? Good, the good island master is a, a little snarky. Snarky little note. It's probably a real bastard. Got me a Zaffy... Zaffy robe? <laughs> Zaffy? X... What the... What the Zaffy? What is that? Anyway, I put it on. Looking quite stylish. Now there's my blue crystal. Not to be confused with the Breaking Bad blue crystals. That's my save point. And what's really cool in this game... I think this was true. For, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was true for both games. Uh, when you hit the save crystal, it not only saves, but it actually will bring all your characters up to full health. Even if they're dead, it'll bring them back to life. So <laughs> you really want to pay attention to where those crystals are. Now, they do take a while to recharge, so you don't want to just waste it. You know, I just... Uh, your characters are going to die fairly regularly in this game. 
So it's no big deal. Just go back to the crystal and uh, get back up the snuff. Uh, trying to figure out what's on the other side of this bush. Absolutely. Oh, what is this? Huh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. If you don't know what it is, try to whack it with your bone club. Uh, looks like I gotta put something into his hands. Okay. Oh, there's another turtle. Whoa, look at that. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be fun trying to figure out that puzzle. Okay. Little dance on the pressure plates. <laughs> yeah, sometimes they'll uh, make you use the enemies to walk on the plates. Got some more turtle meat. Man, it's like an all you can eat buffet here on this island. Okay. It's got to be a, a clue here. X marks the spot. All right, so we'll be spoiling this one, unfortunately. So that's a big deal. You can oh, <laughs> I accidentally launched my turtle meat. Oh, don't worry, Fabio. Five second rule applies. Just gonna skip a bit there so I don't spoil the puzzle for you. Yeah, here's some little mer people, fish people, whatever you want to call these things, and. <laughs> As you can see, he's got a little jump he does. Yeah, these guys do a pretty good bit of damage. You've got to be uh, quick. got to kill these things quick, because they will definitely kill your party. Trying to get some spells lined up here. Now look at this. Yeah, that's uh, getting pretty serious. Okay. Done, done. Oh! <laughs> I <laughs> walked into my cloud. <laughs> Took a little bit of damage. So I hit R. And that's the rest button. You can rest up. I don't have the clock yet. Later, I mean, I'll, you get a watch later on so you know what time it is. I don't have it now. And you can see it's dark, which really kind of sucks because I don't have any torches. There is a spell for light, but I cannot remember <laughs> what it is. <laughs> Too lazy to uh, look it up, so I think I'm just going to be in the dark for a while. Yeah, trying every combination, nothing is working. So, yeah, there's another one of those statues. Legend of Kilhagen. The second most precious thing in life for a seafaring captain is his sword. Okay, so <laughs> putting two and two together here, I think I know what I need to put in the statue's hands. Only question is, I do not have it. Yeah, this is going to be a little tricky in the dark. I won't be able to see the little secret buttons and things. Or for that matter, the bad guys. But anyway, you're getting the idea, right? So let's skip forward and I'll show you the uh, the first big battle. First boss battle, if you will. Just found my first gold key treasure room. Found these little locked rooms here and there that need a gold key. Welcome to the location of your first challenge. Again, I'm just going to skip forward a bit so you don't see the solution to this puzzle. And here they are, the Viper Roots. Nasty, nasty things. I got a projectile poison burst. Do lots of damage. You can see I got the power bar across the top. Almost killed Redzilla. This is fun when you're trying to move around and dodge, quaff potions, and juggle your inventory. <laughs> it's nice. I like to keep everybody alive, but I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, Fabio's down a little bit there. Notice he's got his awesome rapier. Bill Cosby's favorite weapon. Alright. Oh! Man. Okay, I think I'm doing okay so far. I got about maybe, what is that, maybe a quarter left? Maybe I can get through this without losing anybody. That would be pretty cool. Time to break out the sling. Some people call it a sling. I call it a sling. <laughs> oh, point. Oh, come 
god! Oh shoot! Killed my rat. Ah. Man, this guy needs to be seriously landscaped. Ah, cool. I got my first power gym. It's pretty cool how they licensed that that theme music. It's those little touches like that that just really set the game apart from the competition. <laughs> you guys got to the licensed uh, song on uh, Wasteland 2 yet? I didn't want to spoil it in my video, but <laughs> I was not expecting that one. Good choice, though. Okay, well, let me uh, show you some of my later party. All right, so this is about five hours in here, going down into the swamp area, and I'm about to show you one of the tougher battles. <laughs> it's pretty hard, amazingly difficult to try to find my way to it, but I also wanted to show you this just so you could see the variety of uh, enemy types as well as environments. And so I'm going to try to fight these, uh, these herders, the sort of pod-like structures. Meanwhile, I'm getting attacked by these things, and I'm pretty sure that the uh, these guys are getting spawned. So if I don't do this quick enough, I'll be completely uh, surrounded. Got these little guys throwing poisonous gas bombs at me. It's just, yeah, there's the things. i got to kill those. There's about nine of those, or at least six of them scattered throughout the room. So one of my guys is already poisoned there, taking damage. This is probably not going to go that well. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is not good. I can try... Oh, level up. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be trying to uh, <laughs> pick stats right now. Man, there's so much gas, I can't even see. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is what my <laughs> wife's experience is like. <laughs> Every time she goes to the bathroom after I've been in there. Oh, yeah. It's not looking good, folks. I think I'm about to get a big old fat game over! So here I am in the sewers. You know, this is probably the an area that looks more like the first Grimrock game. A lot of stone. But as you'll see, there are some key differences. Look at that. There's a wedge of cheese in there I can't quite get to. It's driving my rat guy crazy. There, did you see that time I rested? Did you see the moon going around? It's because I found the uh, the clock, or the pocket watch, so you can actually see if it's daytime. That's really helpful. There's also a compass. I just wish there was a, there was an option just to show the, the the compass and the and the time on screen without having to keep going into your inventory. But uh, maybe they didn't want to do that for some reason. All right, so. Looks like I might have to jump in this water. And when you jump in the water, you can't get out except at a ladder. And your oxygen runs out pretty quick, and it's very easy to drown. However, <laughs> curiosity is getting the better of me. Oh, some cool stuff. No, no open inventory slides. Oh, look. Oh, the guys are... They lose energy first, and then they'll start taking damage. Got to get to a ladder. Ah. <sighs> <laughs> oh man, those, those little se se segments like that are intense. Looks like I got some pretty awesome stuff though. Look at that. Ener energy regeneration plus twenty percent. That's nice. Put that on my uh, my mage here. Awesome staff, much better than this orb of radiance. Rid of that. Keep it around though, in case you want. You want. If your other characters cast spells, unless they're uh, one of the classes that has uh, the ability to cast a spell without um, a wand, then you can use that orb or the staff to cast uh, spells with. Not sure I just made sense there. <laughs> oh, look, there's another puzzle. Something to do with those, those mouths on the wall. You have to find some way to get those uh, puffs of green floating substance to fly into them. So I'll be trying to figure that out. Somewhere here, though, is a certain battle. 
it's going to kick my butt, but I just want to show show it to you. <laughs> One of my favorite uh, creatures in the game. I think you'll like it too. Just have to try to remember how to get to it. Yeah, I think it's around this corner. But I think you'll agree, it's a pretty badass enemy. Eat some cheese. You know, one thing, uh, another thing with the game, there's no way to sell stuff. So there's really no reason to carry around anything that you don't want to equip right away. You can't ever sell it. <laughs> I kept thinking it's somehow, at some point, I would find a vendor of some sort. Uh, but it did not happen. So when you outgrow your, your gear, just go ahead and get rid of it. Leave it, you know, on the ground for the next series of adventures. Yeah, there he is, the Rattling Boss. Now look at that, he's got a cannon, literally a cannon that he carries around. <laughs> it pretty much one-shots you guys. <laughs> and to make things even better, you're in a very confined area, so there's no Grimrock Shuffle. You just have to attack as fast as you can, keep quaffing potions, and hope you can survive. Now there he is. Oh, boom, see? That cannon does a lot of damage, and it knocks all your guys back. Unfortunately, he's got me up against a wall now. Oh. Look at that guy. You know, if you're going to have to... If you're going to be killed, at least be killed with style. And being uh, <laughs> blasted by the rattling boss's cannon. Pretty cool way to go. <laughs> There's a far cry from those little rats you normally kill in the cellars of uh, other role-playing games. Yeah, and here's another area. This is the Crystal Mine. I want to say this is a good 20, maybe 30 hours in. Fortunately, I've already cleared this area. But there were quite a few spiders in here. And there's a pretty interesting map dynamic because you can see that the dungeon is actually made up of different stories. And you can use a rope to climb down onto the lower levels here. So it makes uh, dungeon mapping a little bit more interesting. This is a, definitely a very tricky dungeon here. You notice also you can't see all the way to the other side. So sometimes you need to use a fireball. To make sure you didn't miss anything. There's a lock. Don't have a key for. <laughs> I got stuck in here pretty hard. Eventually figured it out, but... Yeah, it's it. Like I said, you really have to pay attention to the details. So anyway, it's Grimrock 2, a really really fun game. Just really enjoyed the hell out of it. Even going back and playing it again for this video <laughs> it actually makes me want to just create a whole new party of characters and go for it again. Plus, they've got a construction kit out. You know, I didn't uh, show that in the video, but hopefully, people will uh, make some new dungeons. Maybe make an entirely new game. Based on that, it's pretty fun. So, if you want to buy this game, I recommend and encourage you to do so using my link in the show notes to GOG. That'll take you to my affiliate GOG page. It's on uh, there right now for twenty three ninety nine. Of course, since it's from GOG, that's DRM free, seven hundred and five. 0.7 megabyte download, so you could even burn burn that to a disc and have a backup. Of course, you'll also be supporting this team, Almost Human. As you know from my interviews with Yuho, it's a very small team, and it really shows... I mean, it's amazing, really, looking at this game and just thinking about how much time they must have put into this. So there you have it, Legend of Grimrock 2. I'm going to give this game a full 5 out of 5 drinking horns. I wish I could have done that for the first one, but they foolishly forgot to put the rats in. <laughs> They've more than compensated. You know, they really listen to their fans. Almost human. They, they care. <laughs> but yeah, definitely 5 out of 5 uh, horns on this. Really lots of fun. Well worth 24 bucks. So go ahead, if you haven't already, pick up a copy and let me know what you think. And 
that's all for this week's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I should be back next week, and I'm planning to uh, start rolling out the rest of my Tom Hall interviews. <laughs> I know it's been a while. You guys have uh, been waiting forever on those, so uh, stay tuned. Hopefully it will be worth the wait. As always, I want to thank you very, very much, guys, for your continued support of Matt Chat. really means a lot to me. You guys just have no idea how much it means. If you would like to support the show, uh, you can actually buy a copy of uh, Grimrock 2 from the link in the show notes, or you can support me through the Patreon site. That'll get you access to the uh, monthly Hangout, Google uh, Hangouts, uh, special episodes, and hopefully soon, maybe even some uh, Twitch uh, live uh, live stream stream of consciousness stuff. I don't know exactly what yet, but I've been having some fun with that lately. All right, what about the news from the Matt Cave? Uh, a bit of sad news to start off with. Uh, R.A. Montgomery, you might remember that I interviewed him back in 2010. He has uh, passed away, passed away on the 9th, I believe. He, of course, is the author, creator of the uh, Choose Your Own Adventure series of books. Really had a, a great time interviewing him. Um, I'm, actually, I should see if, if there's any uh, material that didn't make it into the episode that I could post as kind of a, a little bonus tribute to him. Uh, anyway, great guy. It's uh, really sad that he, he's, he's passed away. There is some good news, too, this week. Um, w a couple things. One is the on Steam, they have a, a Cinemaware package. So you might remember these games from the Amiga. It came from the Desert, the Rocketeer, uh, Defender of the Crown. All those are up on Steam now. Uh, they're missing the Three Stooges, but still, it's a pretty good deal. I thought I would pass that on. And uh, I think that's all the, all the news I have uh, for this week. So what about that ale of the week? Well, uh, this week I've got something really special. I uh, noticed that this company, Oscar Blues Brewery, they're out of Colorado, been consistently impressed with all of their beers. I really uh, like their Chub. Uh, I think that's a, that might be a, a Pale Ale or India Pale Ale too. Um, they also have a Dale's Pale Ale, I think. But anyway, they've all been really good, so I was excited to see this one. This is their Imperial Stout. It's called, I'm guessing this is pronounced Tin Fitty. Tin Fighty, Tin Fitty. Not really sure how, what they're going for with that, but it looks like T E N F I D Y. Uh, Cross eyed Psychoplian and Cancupescent. <laughs> uh, let's see. This dog will hunt, it says. Half baked, fully roasted ale. It is a 10.5% alcohol by volume, so definitely a strong ale. <laughs> now, there's a reason they sell these in four packs instead of six packs, because you get a six pack of beer or six pack worth, uh, of worth of alcohol in that four pack. Well, you know, don't chug it. Anyway, it's very, very thick, almost a coppery color uh, head on it. <sighs> Definitely can smell the sort of chocolatey, uh, champagne-like uh, aroma to this. I, I can tell this will be very, very sweet. Uh, nice, nice, a pleasant aroma. Doesn't a, not like a alcohol fumes or anything coming off of this. Actually smells quite nice, so let's give it a taste. Yeah, just as I was uh, expecting, very sweet tasting. Uh, nice, thick, creamy... Uh, consistency to it, uh, a little bit of a cherry, uh, scotch-like aftertaste to it. It's all uh, quite nice. Let me try it uh, again. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's definitely a bit on the uh, uh, strong side. You can definitely tell, uh, tell there's some alcohol in this. It's got sort of a raisiny, coffee-like uh, flavor to it. Not surprising for a uh, imperial ale. Sort of chocolate cherry and a bit of a, a nutty-like flavor to it. Uh, try it one more time. Yeah, it's just a... Uh, it is a little bit sweet uh, for my taste. A little sweet and bitter uh, for my taste, but uh, it's still quite tasty. And I'm impressed they were able to get 10.5% alcohol and not have that be the you know defining taste to it. So it's actually a quite quite nice. Just a little bit too uh, bitter for me though. I'm gonna go a uh, four out of five drinking horns on this. I really do like it. If they just toned down the uh, the bitterness just a notch, it'd be a perfect five out of five. And if you like uh, bitter ones, uh, you know maybe you would even like this better. So anyway, that's the uh, Tenfitty Imperial Stout. 
uh, from the Oscar Blues Brewery. Uh, pretty good stuff. So let's wrap this up with a quotation. And uh, the quotation I found is it's a pretty good one from uh, Don Marquis, an American poet. It goes something like this. When a man tells you that he got rich through hard work, ask him whose. <laughs> See you guys next week. My final message is everybody's got a huge amount of talent. All you got to do is uncover it.